video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. So, keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Coral Blade Grotto reaction video, which if you just saw the intro, you know the script. This one's a, a, an interesting one, and it's actually close to my heart on a personal level just because of some of the things that I've gone through uh, in the past few years with the entity formerly known as the Red Thumb Club, i.e. the Quantum Community, i.e. the Syntax Learning Center. Now, to clarify what I'm saying about that, it requires a little background. Back on March 25th, 2020, I premiered a video called For the Closure of the Quantum Grammar Community. Okay? And I began using that term, quantum community, with reference to everyone who is interested in learning correct sentence structure or who is involved in it somehow, watch the videos, pay attention to what goes on. I did that in March 25th of 2020. There was at that time a group called the Red Thumb Club, as you can see here for the Red Thumb Club. Interestingly enough, after I came out with that quantum grammar community video, I suddenly saw this. The Red Thumb Club disappeared and then this popped up in uh, August of 2020. Keep in mind, I did this in March of 2020 and what I did was I went to the Wayback Machine to find evidence of this and the first mention of it was in August of 2020 after I had published that video. So I found that to be very, very curious. Fast forward to this year and the, the topic of this video, I got the idea to do a news show where I take some choice headlines from the fiction and I syntax them. It, it's not meant to really be an in-depth syntax video. It's just supposed to be like a weekly news wrap up where I give syntax values and sometimes explain a little bit of it. But there are over 400 videos on this channel and over half of them explain syntax from different angles. So you can get complete closure on syntaxing on this channel. So that's not the purpose of this news show. This news show is meant to be something informative and educational, all in, wrapped up in the same thing that you could rely on every week that I publish at 2311 hours every Saturday. So the first edition was on June 16th, 2022. 
Interestingly enough, I've found that the Red Thumb Club, which became the Quantum Community, which is now the Syntax Learning Center, that they did a video on August 14th, and they call it Syntax News, where they're doing exactly what I did, what I began doing on June 22nd, or I'm sorry, on June 16th of 2022. So once again, that group is taking inspiration from me to start their own news program, which more power to them. I, you know, I appreciate, you know, what do they say? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. No doubt, no doubt. Now, a little bit more background on this. I'm going to share with you an email that was sent to me by an individual known as Sergeant Robert Horton. This email was sent to me on, August, on October 15th, 2019. And he wrote to me in uh, italics. We had had some correspondence before that. I wrote to him in correct sentence structure and I put the flag and everything on it. Like if you've ever emailed me, you know the way my style of emailing. I email correctly with correct grammar. So what he basically says is he wanted to reach out to me to say hello, that he's been working with Commander Gould. Um, the Red Thumb Club is about to launch a quantum grammar schoolhouse operation uh, hell, in my opinion, you would make a hell of an asset. Any chance you might be available to work with us a little bit. A new and different perspective never hurt anyone. And it seems to be obvious to me that you're a pretty deep and thorough thinker. A guy named Joey is laying out a curriculum, and I'd like you to assist, if you'd like, in some small way. Bring your perspective, as it were, to the table for us. I know that you train other folks yourself and we want to try and develop something that can be used as a universal model for other instructors to use to train people with. In that way we can keep people who don't know how to syntax correctly from teaching other people how to syntax incorrectly. Just wanted to run that past you. If you have a little time to donate, maybe an hour here and there, as we have fun ripping Joey's curriculum apart until we're all happy with the final product. So in other words, Sergeant Robert Horton back on October 15, 2019, wanted me to audit Joey John Lester's program. And from the, from the email, you can tell that he knows that I know what I'm doing with syntax. And he wants me to make sure that this one-size-all curriculum, which those individuals sell on this website, that it's correct. So he wanted me to donate my now space for free so that they could make money off of a correct syntax curriculum, which I teach in my workshops, in my confidential workshops, a very intensive syntax program. But they wanted me to donate that to them. Needless to say, what I did was I offered Sergeant Robert Horton a consultation, a face-to-face -face video consultation to talk about it. And he never responded back. He didn't want anything to do with that. I offered, also offered him a workshop and he didn't want anything to do with that. Now there were other correspondences where Joey John Lester actually sent me emails and then sent emails after that apologizing for using incorrect grammar. But that's another story. I do have those emails on file. So let's fast forward to what we're looking at today. Today we're going to be looking at and reacting to this syntax news program. This right here. We're going to be reacting to it and uh, see what they're doing with it. So let's pull up the video right now. At this point, I'm going to turn the meeting over to my partner and co-author of the syntax learning module and my friend. The syntax learning module, the very thing that Sergeant Robert Horton wanted me to audit for correctness. Joey-John Coleman-Lester. 
Thank you, Muriel. Again, this is Colin Joy, Hyphen John, Colin Lester. Good day, everybody. Everybody who's joining us, you're in for a treat today. Today is that special day you wish you would have joined us. And we'll be getting this up uh, later up on our website. And I would like you to listen to his inflection, the way that this individual is speaking, and pay attention to it. And then I want you to picture in your mind Russell J. Gould talking. And then I want you to juxtapose those two things. And again, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and I'll leave it at that. And so that you don't have to scramble to find out where our YouTube channel is or what the name of it is, just go to syntaxlearningcenter.com and you'll find the link for the video under media, media news. And also, so today we're going to do something a little different. And I just want to thank everybody for being here today. Thank you for taking time out of your day. And today is not going to be a usual day. Today is going to be syntax forward slash syntax news. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to see what this is all about. Because that's what we are. We're Syntax Learning. You're welcome, Syntax Learning Center. You're welcome. Center, And we're in the specialty of putting the tools in your hands so you can Syntax. Because as Muriel was saying earlier, Chief was asked that question recently. That question came from me, by the way. And my question to Chief was, is why is Syntaxing important in a claimant's journey. And he answered basically, it is the one of the number one foundational tools to safeguard yourself. But what he's going to do, and I haven't watched this whole thing. I only watched like after this part, I probably watched about a minute more. So I'm going to be fresh on looking at this and reacting to this. He's going to talk about syntax. He's not really going to explain the whys of it. Because this is basically, with my opinion, you know, in this reaction video, an advertisement for their syntax learning center so that you can go there and pay to learn how to syntax. Um, whether you learn the hows and whys behind it once you pay that fee for freight, um, I don't know if you will or you won't. But I can tell you, he's not going to tell you how or why here. He's just going to put numbers up, but he's not going to really explain what's going on. That's my prediction. I could be wrong. I haven't watched the whole thing, but that's my prediction. It's basically an advertising thing to get you to go in and pay. The difference between this news show and my news show, which I premiered months ago, is that I don't go in really too too much in depth on the hows and whys, but those things are available for free on my YouTube channel if you just take the time to study it. So that's the difference. With these people, you have to pay for that stuff. For the people that come onto my channel, all it costs is your time and energy to invest in learning it. Let's go. And uh, let's dive into this because we're going to do something. Oh, God, y'all are good. Get ready. It's time to syntax. Okay, I got to share my screen. Give me just a second here. Apologize. And so before I share the screen, I got to explain myself first because here's the thing. These syntax samples I've re edited and recreated from online fiction news titles from major broadcasts. Okay, so broadcast, you know what those are, those channels are. Okay, so I took their titles, mixed them up a little, but still they're pretty close. So nobody can get me on copyrights of the fiction. And it's all in a box, so watch and learn. Hmm, wonder where you got that idea. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes, I can see here. Perfect. Okay. Yep. 
adjective, 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 pronoun in the future tense, adverb, verb, adverb, verb. I'm going to grab my pen here. And this is going to be our syntax palette here. We're going to... Yeah, we got red. That's all we need. Okay. So with this title that I saw online, <laughs> hey, I'm not poking fun at anybody. I'm just saying this is what I found out here in fiction world, okay? And so what I'm here to do is to see, I'm not saying these people or these words are sins. I'm just showing you there's no facts out here. If you have no facts, you ain't got nothing. It's all fiction, right? So we're going to show that syntax will show that this is what it is, fiction. So right here, we got an NC. We got NC here. And if you've taken a course, you know what NC is. I'm not going to explain it in too great of depth because you got to join the Syntax Learning Center to understand what exactly you got to pay to play okay but those who know know so what he just did there is a violation of judge mechanics rule one rule equal without taking the entire scenario into consideration he just went in and put 1.9 there which is incorrect and I'll show you why in a minute. So as we syntax this sentence, this fiction sentence, there's a word here, but it's not what you think it is. What is it? Well, according to my syntax word key, I'm going to assign a value to these words. Anything with a one is an adverb. Anything with a point nine is future tense. Anything past tense is a point eight. Okay. And zero is going to be a conjunction. A2 is going to be a verb, okay? Anything with DPV is going to be a dangling participle verb. Anything with a 3 is going to be an adjective. Anything with a 4 is going to be a pronoun. And that's it. And now we start to begin the syntax, which I've already laid out some of the syntaxing because that's how we do it. Oh, he, put, he put one above the any as well, which isn't, I mean, it's correct in syntaxing it, I would syntax any as an adverb also, but it's not correct because he's putting those in without taking everything into consideration. And by the way, NC means no contract. Everyone has a different style. This is my style. So this word here is in the position. Fair enough, Joey. Everyone has their own style. This is his style. But the most important thing is, is the style correct? After many years, and thousands upon thousands of hours of painstaking work. Fortunately for you, the viewer, I've come up with a system that's consistent across the board with how to syntax so that you don't get these different styles of syntaxing. You come down to one style that is consistent and reliable across the board, where if you follow these certain rules, your syntax will be the same as my syntax, will be the same as his syntax, if he chooses to participate with the correct method of syntaxing, and so on and so forth. So there's no disparity or discrepancies across the board. Because as it stands, what he just said is the way they teach it. Why do we do it? Because that's the way it's done. He just told you. So let's see what he's got here. Of an adjective. This word here is in the position of an adjective. It doesn't mean what you think it means, people. Okay? And then this word here is a pronoun. So far, I ain't got no facts. If I had facts, I'd have a position loidal phrase in front of a fact. I'd have a five, a six, and then a seven representing a fact. Five for position, six for loidal. So far, no fives, no sixes, no sevens, no facts. We just got gibberish, right? We got fiction. So here we go. We got another 
you called it another adverb. Now that is definitely not correct because an adverb would not modify another adverb. There is no scenario where an adverb would modify or need to modify another adverb. And I go into great depth on that. And I also used Colin David I from Win Colin Miller's own words and own teaching to back that up. Nowhere in the five syntax scenarios, the five syntax patterns, is there a one one. You can have several threes next to each other, several tangible contract adjectives ending in, of course, a, a pronoun, which can either be tangible or non-tangible, but never a one modifying a one. And I tell you why that is in multiple videos, which if my editing team does their job, there should be a link to it up here right about now to tell you why an adverb would not modify another adverb and also giving closure as to what an adverb is. And the wonderful thing about it is it's available to you for free. So basically what we got left here is a verb. And we got another verb here, but it's a little bit different verb. It's a DPV. Why is it a DPV? So basically, when I was searching the internet, did they present any facts here? Oh, he's not going to tell no. us. <laughs> I don't see any. It's a bunch of adjectives, adjectives, pronouns, adverbs, verbs, dangling. So for closure, I'll give you, as I did right before it started, the, the correct syntax in InfoWars adjective, host, adjective, admits, adjective, to is a pronoun in the future tense. Nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of evidence or an adverb, in which case not is an adverb, modifying checking into a verb, any is an adverb and then two is a dangling participle verb. Why is two a dang why is facts a dangling participle verb? Because verb is thinking and there's nothing left to think about, so it's just kind of dangling there. So participle verbs, adverbs. That's all they that's all they given us. No facts. So let's move so on. So there's to nothing the, to be afraid of. Right. So let's go on to look at another sample. Okay, and these are in no particular order. I'm not picking fun at anybody because there's nobody here. Because as you see, when I syntax this, these writings, there's nothing here. It says nothing. It just says adjective, adjective, pronoun, or adverb, verb, or adverb, adjective, pronoun. And you're going to see that. I gotta fix my pen. Just a second. So first of CNN would be pronoun, adverb, verb. Now I can write. Sorry about that. Okay. So I usually go through here and I pick out the adverbs first. Which is a violation That's of rule one, rule equal, and judge mechanics. And again, remember I said point eight is in past tense, right? You know what, ladies and gentlemen, I just realized why they come up with these incorrect scenarios of adverbs modifying adverbs. My best guess is that they must have some sort of list of words that probably, my best guess, again, and this is a a video of, of opinion, okay, my opinion, that Russell J. Gould certified or authorized a list of words that these are adverbs, and they memorized this list, and they were taught that the first step is to go in and find these words on this adverb list, and then go through and put ones on there. No matter where they're at, they just put ones on there. And that's how they've been doing this which is not correct. It's a violation of rule one, rule equal, and judge mechanics because you have to have the whole scenario in mind before you syntax, because this is not correct. I mean, the of is an adverb, yes, as I said, uh, at first is a pronoun, of is an adverb, and CNN is a verb, but have been 
An adverb does not modify another adverb, as I stated earlier. But let, let's see if he'll give us a reason for why these things are happening. Which, remember, at the beginning, I predicted that he wouldn't say why. And again, my best guess is that he doesn't know. Okay, we picked out all the negatives. Have we? No, nope. we haven't done any of the negatives yet. So, nom de gear names don't count. Adjective pronouns don't count. So we only syntax the negative words, which there is one here. And then we go back and we start syntaxing. So we got a pronoun here. We got an adjective, adjective, pronoun. Okay. Why would he do that? Why would he syntax? each letter here there's no space between the letters it's not an abbreviation why would he do that why would he do it here but not here again violation of rule one rule equal let's see if he tells us why got an adjective no he doesn't because if you're going to go through and syntax each letter then F would be pronoun, I would be adverb, R would be adjective, S would be adjective, T would be pronoun, O would be adverb, F would be verb, and then as he said, C would be adjective, N would be adjective, and N would be pronoun. But he's jumbling it up, so that's not correct. This would be a 412. Oops. <laughs> Adjectives are threes. Sorry. Oh. Also, the uh, full colon performs the function of a break in the continuance of the evidence in this scenario. Okay. And then we got another adjective running into our adverb there. So there, there's a pronoun. And we get on the other side. So this is not correct, as I said before, that an adverb would not modify another adverb. So text would then be not a pronoun, but an adjective. Have would be a non-tangible contract pronoun. So it would be three, 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 four. Now, whether have is past tense or not, I think that's up for debate. But I mean, if you want it to be past tense, I mean, that's a, it's all up to your interpretation. And then we comply with the rules of syntax and in syntax scenarios that nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. And this follows that and complies with those rules. This would be a four and then Bing would be a one. Out of these two adverbs here, we got a past tense verb. That is correct. And we go into the adverb. And then we've got two words. Oh, the... whoa, 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 whoa. He's ending a sentence on an adverb. What is the adverb modifying, Joey? Is it modifying that comma right there? But the comma functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence. Evidence. So that is not correct, ladies and gentlemen. Bin is a one. It's an adverb. And it's modifying turned into a past tense adjective over is non-tangible contract pronoun because any word group or sentence can only end on a verb or a pronoun. It would not end on a modifier like an adjective or an adverb because, why? Because those are modifiers and there's nothing left to modify. So this is not correct in any sense of the word. And then sources say, of course, would be adjective pronoun. That are isolated here. So we got three and a four. Again, does anybody see any five, sixes, and sevens? Is all right, ladies and gentlemen. I think I've seen all I need to see. So to sum it up, I'm very flattered that this group of people has continued to use my work as a big part of their work. Um, 
right down to the way that they title their communities and create their own programs or shows on on their channel you know following my lead i appreciate that you know i try to be on the cutting edge and thank you very much for uh flattering me in that way i appreciate that i will offer as i have in the past to joey john lester or the muriel individual if they want to learn correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar if they want to get those kinks out of their syntaxing and get real correct closure on why it is they're doing what they're doing they can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and i would be happy happy to accept their application for a correct grammar workshop because as it stands there are some holes in their knowledge there which i just showed and also in compliance with rule one rule equal i also showed you how to correct it and I also gave you a venue for closure that over 400 videos on my YouTube channel, you can study and get correct closure on, on correct sentence structure, communication, poor say syntax, grammar, or again, just like I offered to them, you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and you can apply for a correct grammar workshop. Usually I can get people to, to uh, get closure on this grammar in one to three or four workshops. Um, it just depends upon you and your motivation to learn it also if you want to um, there are channel memberships available on here where you can get exclusive content not available to the public exclusive streams and things like that um, just uh, click the join button and go over there there are two tiers the first tier is for people that just want to show appreciation and support for what it is that i do and help this keep this vessel healthy and keep it afloat and there's also tier two, which carries the title of contributor, which means that those people actually have a hand and a voice in the direction that this YouTube channel is going. So you're actually a participant, a contributor in it, if you join that tier. That wraps up this reaction video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you next time. Salute.